So in the previous session, what we did is, is actually uh, we built a queue from scratch in C++ by using the normal operations like that, uh, NQDQ and Traverse. And uh, and then I actually debugged my queue that was actually not working. I was actually finding the reason that why it is not working because everything seems to be fine. Then I actually found that uh, in C++, when you actually don't use to initialize the variables, uh, means the instance variables, they usually have garbage values. Means pointer also mm -hmm. actually point to some garbage memory locations. So actually, uh, to make them point to null, we need to point them to null within the constructor. And with that, mm -hmm. your queue actually starts to work. Because if you actually see the uninitialized values of the front end area, then you can see that in the uninitialized value, it is actually not null, but it is actually pointing to some values. That is actually hexadecimal of one and then another memory location is actually zero and so they are actually not pointing to null both of them and that was the condition of our empty queue but it is not fulfilled so the queue is actually not getting started and then the rest of the code is not actually uh, in, uh, not actually running so because if, if it is not in starting the first element then how can it, uh, how it can actually insert the rest of the elements so traverse was also not working because I'm in an empty queue. How will the traverse work? So this was the basic purpose of this queue. Now our aim is to actually build a private queue by using two queues. So we will use this queue class and uh, make two queues, and then from by using those two queues, we will actually build a private queue. Now let's actually uh, have a look at the logic of uh, a private queue. Mm, that uh, we have seen in the previous video also mm, let me explain you also um, in uh, uh, dev cpp itself that what is the main logic of a private queue when we actually build it with two queues wait a second so here is our queue.cpp now, now let's actually have a look that uh, queue. Uh, we will actually construct these are just the test operations which I actually use to test my queue. And now in this queue, we will actually create two queues and we will create a priority queue from those two queues that is Q1 and Q2. And then uh, what I will do is that now what will be my aim? Let me actually define my aim here yeah, in a comment. So whenever we have input like say two. 3, 4, uh, 2, 4, 5, 1, 3, something like that will be our input. Mm, so what will happen is that, uh, firstly, whenever actually 2 comes, then mm, our Q1 will be, uh, Q1 will be something like this, that uh, uh, firstly 2 will come and Q1 uh, and Q2 will be empty. Mm, so what will happen is that, uh, in the uh, we can insert it in any of the queues, right? Because we have both of the queues to be empty, so we will insert it in the first queue. Yeah. Then when 4 comes, then, uh, then what we can do is that, okay, so starting uh, the next logic, that is when we actually got 4. Then whatever is there in our first queue, we will just dequeue it and get those element in the second queue until we get uh, the front element to be greater than our current element, right? This will be our logic for the queue builder mm, so that uh, it will actually get into place and we get an ascending order in the queues, right? So we will actually look at the, uh, those front elements by using the peak operation. We have a peak operation in the queue itself. Let me actually try the peak operation. That is Q. Uh, it is just returning the front element, nothing else. So it is just uh, returning the front element. So we can actually make it to uh, return some element like empty. And here I can actually uh, return it. Return front data and then else if the queue is empty I can return now in the peak operation right so in the q1 and q2 we can actually use that and uh, when 4 comes then what will happen is that we will have two steps q1 and q2 
one will be actually dq uh, so four will be having a place so firstly we have two and so we know that the first element of the q1 is not actually greater than four so we will dq uh, two from q1 and put it into um, q2 and now also our uh, current element is uh, uh, current element is four now we will do what is that we know that the second first queue is now empty now we will actually uh, try to find the place of four so first queue is empty and looking in the second queue we will actually append four means we will just mm, and queue four into the second queue now. now the third element comes out to be five so q1 will be empty and q2 will be now two and four Two and four. This was the state. Now the five comes. So we will actually compare it with the, the first element that is the front element that is actually equal to two. And then mm, we will do what is that? Uh, we know we get to know that uh, the first element is actually smaller. So five is act actually at some later place. And so we, we will start dequeuing the uh, q2 into the q1 like two and then. Uh, firstly let's dq let me actually show all of the steps so we actually dq from the front then q1 will be now 4 then q2 uh, and then what we will do is that 2 4 and then 5 in this way means our current element was 5 so we inserted it into q1 and the q2 will now be empty now uh, in the next element our uh, our next element was 1 so what we will do is that q1 was q1 state was 2 4 and 5 q2 state was empty and now we will compare with the first element now the first element is actually greater than the our element so our element needs to be at the front so what we will do is that mm, we will insert 1 in the uh, q2 and the q1 will be same that is 2 4 5 mm, and then what we will do is that we will keep on dequeuing and we have inserted we will keep on dequeuing the first uh, uh, queue and insert it in q2 like 1 2 4 5 now if uh, now our current element comes out to be 3 as seen in this uh, so our q1 state is actually nothing none and the q2 state will be uh, 1 2 4 5 mm, so what we will do is that we will compare it with the start element and then we will compare it with 3 so start element is actually smaller than our current element so we know that the 3 is actually at a later place so we will start uh, dequeuing from q2 and inserting into q1 so something like this 2 4 5 then in the next state we will do what is actually 1 uh, 2 and then q2 will be uh, 4 4 and 5 and then we will compare it with this particular element and this has comes out to be larger than 3 so we will dequeue um, we will nq 3 in the q1 1 2 3 and then q2 will be will be what um, 4 5 and now we will nq 4 5 into the q1 like 1 2 3 4 let me actually show it step by step 5 and then q1 at last will be 1 2 3 4 5 and then q2 will be nothing so the, in this way, our uh, two queues will work as the priority queue when we actually maintain a priority of ascending order and we can get the get minimum from both the queues by using both the queues by uh, in the big open time and that's actually the benefit of a priority queue. Now, the get min function will work in such, in such a way that the get min will actually uh, look at the, look at both the queues look at both the queues and you find the non-empty queue find the non-empty queue and get the front and that will be a simple function for the get me right 
so this will be our get minimum mm, and uh, uh, we can do all the operations like the front uh, say peak or say dq as a normal queue by just selecting that non empty queue first and we will get our underflow condition will be condition will be when when both the queues are empty so this will be our underflow condition for the practice implemented using two queues so this was our main basic logic let's try to implement that so firstly i think i must actually make another class for that right? class priority queue and in this class i will have try as the constructor constructor must be public and uh, i will have a function uh, in this what i can actually keep is actually two queues so i will make q1 and then i will make q2 i will keep two variables right so i have uh, uh, two instances of the classes so q q1 and q2 mm. so what i can do in the initialization mm. well nothing um i can actually uh, keep a variable of say anti selected uh, selected a uh, q right or, and this will be initialized to 0 means for the q1 I can actually uh, keep q0 and q1 as the two queues and in this I will say q1 and q2 as it will be mm, similar to my example so currently select, selected selected q will be 0 by default means of q1 will be selected and uh, what else will be my functions will be my in and q will be my insert function so uh, so i will make uh, uh, a new function that is gent insert which will actually intelligently insert the data into one of the queues based on that and there will be the whole process of uh, of my insertion into one of the queues by decreasing the elements from the rest of the queue so it will be my anti data and then um, i will use the queues dq function and uh, mm, let me actually uh, let me actually okay so peak is, peak is normally working i can just comment that out because i don't want that uh, for now now intelligent insert will be there and the rest of the functions will be also there uh, like uh, intelligent mm, delete which will delete from the non empty queue and void uh, intelligent traverse right something like this so this will be our uh, three functions this will traverse by looking at the norm and TQ and selecting one of them <coughs> right and uh, now oh, in the intelligent insert firstly I will have a look at that uh, at the at the selected queue so uh, firstly let's actually select the queue right that which one is empty so let's actually have a look at that so which q is empty so if if q1 dot front is equal to is equal to none yeah in the dq condition i also need to uh, have a look at one also that uh, otherwise i will delete means front is equal to front next 
and uh, uh, at one condition our uh, front will become null so I don't think there is any loophole in that hmm if front uh, q's front q1's front is equal to what okay so front uh, uh, can't be accessed mm, I can check for uh, the is empty function uh, by uh, is empty function of by making another function into the queue itself because I want to keep these private so I can make the is empty function down below like bool is empty something like this and uh, is empty and it will return front is equal to is equal to null something like that so mm, it will return if front is equal to null uh, then our queue is empty well in the uh, in that condition the rear uh, will also be null something like this and I must actually ensure that when decking the elements if uh, uh, it is actually just going forward and not doing anything for the rear pointer so i must actually have a look at those also means if front is not equal to none it is actually trying uh, to delete the front mm -hmm. and firstly front will be actually set to front next right and uh, if uh, front is actually before deleting uh, so that there is no loophole if front is equal to bf right means if it was the last element front is equal to not and rear equal to not and this condition will actually come before actually setting this one if front is equal to uh, rear means if both were pointing at the last element and we have already grabbed the last element to be deleted then front a will be set to null and rear will be set to null otherwise if it is not the case then i can go for the else condition that is front will go for the next one and i can just remove this statement and then finally this is deleted okay so now bool is empty function will actually return me that particular condition that if uh, q if uh, i now i can say that q1 dot is empty q1 dot is empty q1 dot is empty uh, means if uh, it is empty and uh, and then q2 dot is empty and it's not means okay so let's uh, let me actually see that uh, uh, if uh, the second one is not empty and the first one is empty then i will say so like did q is equal to zero else if I will have q1 dot is empty and then and the q2 dot is empty and now the q1 is not empty then for the dequeuing procedure I will select selected q is equal to 1 right yes so this will be my selected q now i have uh, my selected queue so uh, i will make another another stuff like what i can uh, do is that instead of making uh, these uh, references i can make uh, the pointer so that i can quickly point another one uh, to say otherwise i will need to make the constructed cell so let me make them point hmm 
and then in that initialization uh, I can actually make it initialize them with new variable Q2 equal to something like this and uh, by using that I can make another pointer Q uh, Q3 Q star Q3 and then if for selected Q is equal to is equal to is equal to what if the selected Q is equal to equal to zero means the empty one um, Q1 is empty then what I can do is that Hmm. Well, why I need that pointer? Well, I was actually requiring it to be a pointer just to uh, so that I can shift it to be uh, another uh, shift it to a pointer easily, like Q1 or say Q2. Um, but uh, I think I can do that simply in the if condition itself, and I don't need this code. if selected q is equal to 0 means that data is actually present and if it is come comes out to be in this state that is both the q are empty then i will have selected q is equal to minus 1 so if uh, selected q is equal to 0 means our um, first q is empty and some data is present in the second q now now actually look at the and so this data has came for the insertion i will compare with the uh, so i will get the data from the second queue so um and the uh, current data at front at q is equal to front of q will be equal to um say q two dot peak So it will uh, give me the front at that queue mm, and uh, if uh, if this at q is actually i have to actually compare it with that so uh, if, uh, if this is actually greater than my data so my data is actually lesser so this process will come right otherwise the next process will come if this was actually the simple case let me actually take it the uh, next size if my data is actually less as the fronted queue then what i can do is that uh, i will uh, i will in the q1 i will enq uh, what i will enq uh, my data and hmm, i will enq my data and then i will insert all the data from q2 to say q1 so I can actually um, in the delete itself in the dq function I can return the data also so I can make it of uh, int in dq and then what I can do is that I can I can return after deleting uh, but if it will actually delete so for the copy sake uh, and trash is equal to del mm. if there was uh, if it is not equal to null so i can actually get the data in the trash is equal to del's data and uh, uh, after deleting that element i can return the trash something like this else i will return null so uh, it's an integer so i think i must uh, uh, what uh, i must actually return something uh, in the integer for that so i think i can for now return minus one hmm. and uh, here 
Hmm. Here I can actually keep a track of that. Now I need to actually get the data while uh, from q2 uh, dot is empty. Jab, uh, until the q2 uh, is not becoming empty, I can actually get the data from the q2. So yeah, uh, I can get the data like int data uh, is equal to int val is equal to say q2 dot dq function will be called and it will uh, delete and itself delete and also in turn give me the data and then in the q1 I can and q that value so this function will run until all the data is actually transferred from the uh, q2 to q1 right so this was the case when my data was actually my data was actually um, there um, lesser than the first element now now the condition comes that uh, whether mm, yeah, there is a state when my data needs to be come in between the data in the queue else what I can do is that mm, I can run here so uh, while q2 2 dot is empty so this loop will keep on running so firstly I will dq I will get the value from q2 dot dq right and then I will uh, I will get the value uh, so if uh, if my value which is coming is actually uh, lesser than the data right so it needs to be inserted so I will insert q1 dot q1 dot and q and what will be there uh, my value else if uh, my data is actually lesser than value then there I will insert my data right now uh, there might be a case when these all values are coming and if the value is actually coming uh, so yes but if it is actually uh, enqueuing my data and that's actually my data is actually lesser okay so let me review it if the value which is actually queued from the front of the queue 2 uh, is actually lesser than my data then it needs to be inserted else mm, my data is actually smaller and that value is actually larger so my data will be inserted once mm, and then uh, the q1 will be enqueued with that value right and if the place was in between uh, those data values so i can actually get uh, inserted is equal to zero and if this case is met then i can say inserted is equal to one right and then after this while loop if inserted is still zero this is still zero then what i can do is that q1 dot in q that data simple so this condition will run and this will actually insert my data from q2 uh, to q1 and whenever the q1 was empty now uh, this is the thing which needs to be done whenever uh, there was q1 empty and q2 was filled with some data now we need to do the same thing for the whenever the q2 is empty and well, i need to insert from q1 so i can copy this star well that's why i was actually trying for pointers because then the work would have been easier mm. But it's okay. I can actually write that again. No issues, and that will be more readable. That uh, if uh, 
uh, selected Q is 1 means the empty queue is 1 then what I will do is that I will look from the mm, uh, from the start of the queue 1 that is filled with some data mm, and then I will look at the my data which is actually lesser then I will insert into q 2 my data mm, and then I will insert from q 1 until it is empty uh, the value which is actually dequeued from q 1 and I will insert it into q 2 nice now else if my data is actually must come at a later place then while q1 is not empty i will get the data mm, from q1 if my uh, if that particular uh, data which is dequeued is actually lesser than my data then my mm, q2 will be inserted with that data otherwise mm, my otherwise uh, what i will do if my data is actually smaller then q2 will be inserted in my data and then that value will be inserted inserted will be set to 1 and if it is not inserted then i will insert my data at the end so this was my function hmm. this was my function and i think it will run fine there might be minor bugs in this function for intelligent insert nice so this was actually my intelligent insert uh, function for actually inserting and that was the main logic and uh, <coughs> uh, the ins intelligent delete will do what is that it will just delete from uh, the first queue so uh, I will first have a look at that which queue is actually empty so my um, if <coughs> if uh, anti filled queue is equal to zero by default minus one by default if q1 dot is empty then what i can say is that if the first one is not empty then <coughs> then i can say that filled queue is equal to zero and the second one it must be empty q2 must be empty hmm. um else if q1 dot is empty uh -huh. not q2 dot is empty then filled q will be set to 1 means the first the data is actually there in the q2 instead of say q1 else if both the uh, queues are empty then it will be minus 1 so, hmm, if if field q is equal to is equal to um, say uh, zero, then I will traverse the data from the q one. So I will call I will call q one dot traverse simple, and if um, Q uh, otherwise I will check for the if field Q is equal to equal to 1 then I will say Q 2 dot uh, traverse and else I will say that both the queues empty I will say both the are empty nice so intelligent uh, uh, that was actually sorry that was not actually delete that was actually traverse hmm. and uh, in the i will make the delete here intelligent dq will be more farmer yes now in this i will use the same logic of the filled queue like this and i will delete from the one which is actually filled hmm. 
so in the field queue uh, I will get the field queue so uh, hmm. if field queue is equal to what's a zero then what I will do is that um, if the field queue is actually equal to zero then I will call the queue one dot dq else if field q is equal to equal to 1 then I will say q2 dot dq else it means that it was actually equal to minus 1 then I will say that q dot q is empty so these are the basic functions for the intelligent dq and for the intelligent traverse and for the intelligent insert so that's the basic logic of a flat dq when implemented with two queues uh, so yes and you can implement this in the main by making the object of flat dq like this priority Q right yes uh, small priority Q PQ and you do whatever like uh, PQ dot intelligent uh, insert and then whatever values you want to pass like uh, two four one hmm. two four five and three four five one three and then we can traverse the same by using intelligent traverse intelligent traverse function and then we can also dq And then I can again traverse to actually have a look at the change created there. So that was the basic program uh, of uh, creating a priority queue from two queues, and this is the explanation with explain. And also I can actually get the main uh, by just getting the front. So I can create it simply at whichever queue is actually filled get the front it is like a peak function in normal queue so i can actually create it here like uh, uh, get min because my priority key is a min priority queue that is the uh, elements are actually there in ascending order so i can get the get min here mm, so i can uh, get the use the same logic of this field queue that is to actually get the one which is actually having some values and uh, if q is equal to is equal to what if q is equal to is equal to zero then what i can actually have the anti val i can actually get the result in the val val is equal to minus one for basic initialization if the field q is actually zero then i can actually get the val in uh, q1 dot peak right and then i can actually get else if for uh, uh, field is equal to equal to 1 then i can do what it val will be q2 dot peak else val will be minus 1 but that's already minus 1 so i will return val so that's actually the basic uh, logic of this get min function and i can also get the minimum and it will actually get the minimum that is one if expected so pq dot get min. this is the way you will implement a uh, prior to queue from two queues and you can just modify the logic for actually uh, storing a max priority queue using two queues thank you for watching